Good evening, Twitch. Hello, YouTube. Welcome to Birth of a World. Good evening, everyone. On tonight's show, we're going to be taking our map of the region kind of around where our campaign is starting to take place, uh, which we uh, figured out uh, several episodes ago now using kind of the Settlers of Catan technique to build a map out. And then we're going to be taking this map, basically, and actually converting it to more of a freehand style, more of a traditional fantasy map, uh, using a different drawing program, as well as adding a bunch of details and kind of figuring out uh, where other towns are going to be, things like that. A um, couple of caveats for the stream. We are dog-sitting tonight, so we've got... Uh, there's, there might be extra bits of dog noise in the background. I'm sorry, there's not much I can do about that. They're going to be noisy. Um, yeah, and other than that, hopefully the stream quality is okay. So... Um, Let's talk about what we need to do to improve upon uh, this map now. Obviously, we've got kind of... We have our three nations. We set up uh, descriptions for them a couple episodes ago about how, you know, Alvilda is kind of elves, but they're more like Vikings. Um, how Kazel is a dwarven-dominated, heavily commercial, heavy, heavily capitalist uh, nation, also quite large. And then we have the Dagger Shore Vale here, which is a federation of city-states, uh, one of which being Copperholm, this town here that we kind of figured out the player characters are coming from. And our first adventure site, uh, Tincliffe, is of course located in this quasi-disputed territory in the Mountains of Metal, as a kind of a resource-rich uh, area of the world um, that's, that's uh, ripe to be contested. So uh, this is going to be a bit slower pace, I think, than uh, my usual videos. Um, apologies for people who uh, came here expecting, you know, to be building monsters or something like that. Um, but this is, I think, going to be an interesting one for people who are really into uh, world building, who are really into actually the mechanics about building a location. We're going to take these three nations here in this rough co outline of a coast that we've got, uh, start adding some details, start filling it in the edges of the bit, maybe zoom the map out a bit more fill in more of what's going on around here, uh, and really start building up our campaign world. Uh, and to do this, we're actually going to be doing some freehand drawing, uh, which I'm going to be attempting to do using GIMP, because uh, I am not an artist, per se. Uh, I don't draw freehand normally, but uh, I do know how, and I do have some of the equi necessary equipment to do it. Um, so, yeah. So this is the GIMP, uh, the GNU Image Manipulation Program. Uh, it's free software, just like, just like uh, Inkscape, the program I'm using for the other map. Um, they're both free software. I don't use any like paid-for expensive tools here because um, I don't want to give Adobe any more of my money than is necessary. Let me just get my thing going here. All right, there we go. Um, so I've got, this, I've got the canvas sized up just like for a print piece of paper. Although, actually, I think I'm going to uh, change to... Can I do this in landscape? I have a preset for it. Okay. Do, 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 do. There we go. Okay. I'm just going to change it to landscape orientation. Now, normally, when I'm drawing a big area map, um, try to do a landscape orientation. Uh, so let's start out, uh, I feel like we need to kind of start out by really just kind of carving out this coastline here, maybe starting to add some detail to it. Uh, I'm going to just put this over on my other screen. Um, it may make it hard to see chat, to see the chat. Um, it may make it hard for me to see the chat, so apologies, but I need to get this off of my screen so that I can actually uh, look at it while I'm working here. So let's, uh, let me just fiddle with this a bit. I had to put the window on my main screen first so I could show you all, and now I have to fidget with everything. I know this is such a professional show, isn't it? Okay. Go. And uh, good to see you too, Ripster. Uh, welcome back to the show. This is more, much more of a world-building type show than just the uh, building this monster. But I do intend, uh, in a later video, I want to do a uh, encounter design video where we talk about doing a high-level boss encounter, which is actually something I personally haven't done very much of, so it'll be a learning experience for me, and it'll be an excellent opportunity for some input uh, from the chat. Those of you who are in chat, if you're new to the show, uh, this is an interactive podcast, so at various points I'm going to be asking for suggestions, or if you've got a question or idea you just kind of want to throw it there in chat, go ahead and do it. 
Uh, and if, you, if there's something insightful, then we'll take a pause and talk about it, things like that. Really informal. Um, so here's our first question. We got this kind of, I'm gonna just kind of carve out what I think we've got so far. Come on, get going. There we go, okay. So we've got, I'm just roughly carving out what I think the coastline looks like so far. Carve up there. So this is that point by Alvilda. There we go, carving down around here. We've got some jaggedies. We go up into the mountains some more. We have this kind of fjord almost type shape. And then it comes back down to a point. It goes up about here. So what I'm doing is I'm actually just looking at the hexes that we shaded in uh, all those episodes ago and just roughly trying to follow that outline. And then we're gonna go back later and probably add some more detail to this. Uh, but just trying to roughly trace out uh, what we think this coast is going to look like. All right, that looks good, so. So that's the sea there. Um, so this is Alvilda. And this is Dagger Shore Vale. And this is Kazal. Just need to uh, just adjust something here, just a second. Okay. And we know that in between all this, we're going to have the mountains of metal inside this mess. Um, up kind of in this area here. So I'm going to start. This is how I do it for my own freehand maps. If any of you guys have gone to my blog before, you might have seen kind of the maps that look this style. Normally I draw these in pen, uh, in pen on paper and then scan them. So this is kind of me experimenting. I don't think, I don't really have the equipment to uh, record in pen, uh, to record pen and paper uh, for the stream. So this is just me uh, kind of strong batting it up here, drawing in this mountain range using consummate Vs. No. Um, let's do a quick... Uh, uh, I'm just going to stick a layer in here quickly and uh, outline some quick notes about where the divides are based on the Settlers of Catan map. Uh, so, if you remember, we got this layout here. Um, and we want to kind of have a divide. Yeah, I'm just going to draw this out. So we've got kind of and we've got uh, kind of just edging out where the terrain boundaries are. Uh, where the edges of the mountains are, things like that, so that I can help. Uh, figure this out later. I'm drawing this on a separate layer so that I can just delete it afterwards. And then the desert kind of goes like that. Um, and there was a river kind of running along that side. Uh, so that's basically the outline of kind of what we've got so far. Let's actually keep going on this outline for a bit here. Uh, try and extend this out. I don't really plan on drawing the entire continent right now per se. Uh, but we can certainly make some notes, like I think Alvilda, we're probably going to kind of curve it back a bit, and bring it more like the, this way. And I want kind of Alvilda to be, let's pick a different color for borders. So Alvilda's border right now is along this edge, basically, right here. Um, ditto Daggervale's border is in the mountains, along here. Extend that up that way a bit. And then we have Kazel. Now I feel like Alvilda might sh be shaped more like this, kind of going that way a bit, continuing on this line more or less uh, a bit there. Maybe if it continues to follow this river until it hits, let's, uh, let's say there'll be a lake or something up here or an inland sea, I don't know. Depends on what scale we've decided on for this stuff, but uh, let's put a lake there and say this river's coming from a lake. Twisty, twisty river, winding its way through a uh, rather tropical region in the, in the desert there. I don't even remember what color of red I was using, whatever. 
maybe it's more of a pink than a red I just grabbed, but how big is my eraser? I'm going to need a better eraser than that. Do, 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 do. So chat, uh, if you guys, if anyone's got any suggestions of kind of like terrain features you'd want to see, you want to see, is that, ah, that is not what I want at all. Uh, any suggestions for, you know, uh, interesting boundaries, be they physical or uh, like examples from the real world where borders and pieces of terrain that you think are interesting exist. And I'm going to say that there's another country up here, just like that. Um, so if that's that shape, maybe the mountains continue, maybe the Alvilda border continues to follow the mountains and there's a waterfall here maybe, like a, a, a falls and this that cuts through this mountain range from this lake, in which case this lake's probably up at a much higher elevation. And we can continue the Dagger Vale a bit further that way too. Um, yeah, maybe we'll have the Dagger Vale. Let's add another border, we'll figure it out later, but we'll have the Suddenly, Dagger Vale's got way more neighbors, and maybe that's good. Um, I feel like this probably needs to be tightened up, though, at some point. So maybe we take this and we go. Any suggestions from the chat or any questions at all about kind of the process for building up a campaign world? Uh, I'm going to make this go more like that, I think. I'll erase this. Well, I guess I can erase this now. It's just annoying because the size doesn't stay. My eraser size is tiny. Yes, erase, erase. No, this needs to be bigger. Do not want. Because the valley needs to close up at some point, right? The valley needs to close up at some point, so we should probably start bringing this to a point, maybe. Sigh. Sorry, like I said, I'm not I'm a programmer. I don't normally do these art type things, but it is interesting. Let's continue the mountains off this way. And let's draw them right off the edge of the page. Maybe we've got a, another region up here too. Say the mountains end about like that. Uh, we'll come up with names and start drawing cities and stuff on this next. Uh, that means the desert's going to extend a bit further this way. Because now we've got a much bigger rain shadow. Ditto this. These mountains are going to be having a rain shadow over here. Like that. Um... And we'll come up with some stuff for this neighbor of Alvilda here. Um, yeah, okay, I like this. Oh yeah, let's finish up that borderline. Uh, so the dagger veil is actually just the entire veil. And Kazal's border continues like this. Um, so there's that. Let's see. Okay, switch back to the outline layer, make sure I didn't bung that up. Yep, okay, good. Uh, get my black pen back out. Now we can start, and I'm not gonna follow the line precisely because I want to add detail um, to this coastline. Something, one of my players told me once is they absolutely love detailed coastlines, so I try and uh, oblige them by kind of adding little, lots of jitter, little variations, little edges, maybe we'll zoom in a bit even. There we go. We can start really working in some detail here. Let's add a hook. Just a little hook. Little peninsulas, you know. Maybe we'll make this even a bit bulgier. Turn it into a bay. Uh, 
Uh, now we've got a bay. Now I, may, now I can put a town on the bay, right? We're just adding noise. I'm just, I don't have any plan for any of this. I'm just kind of winging it here as we add noise to the edges. Um, that will allow us to kind of, um, yeah, I don't know. I think this coast is fine for now. It's kind of what we've, it's kind of what we planned it to be. I might want to narrow this fjord up or something like that, but it probably doesn't need to have that happen just now. Let's get some more of these mountains in. Um, Copperholm, yeah, I want to put it in a big, interesting looking mountain, something like that maybe with another one behind it. Another one in front of it, maybe, and then we kind of put entrance to the mountain home there. Uh, one easy way to kind of add depth to when you're drawing mountain ranges is just put ex put other mountains in front of the other. They don't all have to be, de you know, you can have them touching. They don't have to be detached and that sort of thing. Uh, and then when you want to add some more depth, you can start just kind of ed just edge in a little bit from one side. Decide whichever way your sun is going to be. I'm going to put it in the west so where it's in the evening here and just take the right edge and kind of just push it in a bit. Uh, this is easy, a lot easier to do with pen because it bleeds naturally so it, it shows up better. But uh, I didn't tell anyone this was going to be drawing class but apparently this is me tr showing you how I draw maps. If you will find anyone finding this interesting, anyone chat want me to get on with making cities? I could sit here and draw mountains all day. Um, we should probably figure out where there are going to be some major cities and some other kind of interesting points of terrain. Because uh, I don't know about you, but I think this is probably not the best bits. But hey, we have Copper Home there. Um, let's uh, make another layer for map pins. Uh, and we'll start adding landmarks. So, come on, new layer. There we go. Uh, let's go back quickly. I just want to pull up. I know there's no Google Drive link for this video because it's just me drawing this map. Um, and I don't usually put the maps until they're actually done done. Uh, but let's pull up. I'm just going to pull up the notes from a previous episode where we talked about um, picking up the notes from Birth of World number 14 um, because I wanted the t name of the town in the desert. Okay. Hey, why are we not zooming? Come on. No. This window probably doesn't have focus. No? Okay, whatever. Oh, there we go. Now it decided to zoom. Cool. Um, so we talked about we have this desert village called Nassar. And then we have the major city not far from it where we're basing the adventure out of which is called uh, Vrasta. Yes, okay, based on previous videos. So um, Vrasta, we, I believe we decided was gonna be here in kind of what's gonna be the foothills area. Um, and then Nassar is gonna be just a little bit into the desert, right about here. I think, as we said, I think we decided it would still be kind of on the steeps on the edge of the mountains here. So there's Nassar. Um, what other notes can we add to this? Um, well, we have Copperholm here. And of course we have the village of Tincliffe, which is up here in the mountains uh, where the story takes starts. When I do release this map, I promise I will replace all the text that's just handwritten in here. Um, with actual text instead of just the rough drawings. Uh, what else do we have? Well, we know we have the capital of Alvilda here. I'm going to have to pull up my notes from older ones that aren't on Google Docs. Uh, just a second. Well, let's pull this over here. Um, where am I looking for? Region. Here's our region list. Uh, Alvilda, Dyershore Vale, Kazal. Did we come up with a name for that capital? Um, Asmund, there we go, Divine Protection. So that is the, gonna be the capital of Alvilda, located here. 
draw a big diamond for capital cities because it's presumably heavily populated also. So there's Asmund. Uh, so now we can kind of start dropping extra towns that we might use in future adventures. Um, this is kind of the best, one of the most interesting parts, or one of the funnest parts, I guess, about... Uh, one of the funnest parts about drawing out this world is just coming up with... Stop it. There we go. Coming up with things that can be added to it afterwards. So we're just going to start dropping towns, basically. I feel like we need to add some terrain details first to Alvilda, though. Um, so we know that it's kind of... It's ridged by mountains, right? We have this kind of ridge of mountains over here. that separate uh, it from Dagger Shore Vale and form the one edge basically of this river. Um, ditto, we know that the area around the capital has got some very steep kind of cliffs, but I'm just gonna draw them as hills for now because shorthanded all that. Um, basically how I draw cliffs normally is just kind of these vertical strokes like this. Um, yeah, okay. Did a cliff like about here, and then it kind of disappears and as the dagger veil comes into the sea. Um, more cliffs, more hills. Um, brace for noise, people, as the other dog is back now. Uh, I'm glad I'm interesting to you guys, chat. I was really not sure about this episode. <laughs> um, so we need to add some, some interest here into the interior of Alvilda, because I don't believe it's all big, wide open plains, given that it's in a kind of mountainous region. I um, just want to say that, that there's going to definitely be some mountains here, because I like the idea of kind of having the edge of this bay uh, be kind of cut off. Uh, from the, the mountains that more or less ring Alvilda. Um, maybe maybe we'll lower it down to some cliffs around here, make it a bit easier. Maybe this is... So if we make this area easier here, then maybe we have a port town here. Just going to draw a little circle. I realize I'm drawing on the wrong layer now, but whatever. I can merge it all together uh, or redraw it or whatever I want later on. Uh, and then around this bay, there's probably going to be several settlements of varying sizes. So we're just going to draw kind of map. We're not going to name stuff yet. Uh, there's always kind of a rush to name things. Maybe we'll put a castle or something there. Um, there's often the rush to name things all the time, to want to, you know, not be able to put a pin on the map without being able to put a name next to it. Naming stuff is hard, and you will waste a ton of energy coming up with names for places that never even focus, never feature uh, in your setting. So what you can do instead is just draw the, put the dot on there. And then when you want to say, you know, maybe you have a player character who wants to be from a small town, they can say, okay, you're from here. And then you write in the name of that town, whatever you and the other player character come up with is kind of an idea for their town. Uh, a lot of being able to go off the rails is also about kind of having enough stuff defined generally. Um, again, apologies for the dog noise. Uh, enough, a lot of it's about having enough stuff defined in really general, really broad terms uh, so that when your players want to go off the rails or when they want to explore in a new direction, you can have a vague idea at least of, okay, if they go this way, they'll find this stuff and there's towns here and there's this prominent terrain feature that they'll definitely see and come across. Um, that's why it pays to have much more of the region mapped out than just the areas where your, your adventure is taking place in. But don't waste time putting in every fine little detail, or you're just going to burn yourself out creatively. I like the idea of this kind of flowing through a canyon. Uh, shout out to my homies in Niagara. We have a big waterfall here and then a can uh, flowing into a canyon. If you know what I mean? I'm going to put towns here and here on opposite sides of this border. <clears throat> uh, and then we've got lake. Let's draw an edge for this lake. Let's say it's... Again, we're going to, we've got our generalities and now we're going to use a really 
So I find I kind of grip hard and have my wrist be real stiff and I can get more of that kind of jittery details going on. And I mean, it looks like really sloppy lines, but then you look at a map and just like, oh, we're adding detail. We're making the terrain much more interesting. We're making the coastline not be a smooth curve because it rarely ever is. You know, when you zoom out, this messy line is going to resolve to just a thin little line. Uh, But uh, as long as you don't make it look like you're just kind of going in and out all the time, you know, draw a bit of square, straight places. Don't be afraid to have like a 90 degree corner or something or hook it in like teeth. It's all good. It's all detail. Everything you can do to add detail uh, is a good thing. So there's our lake now. Lake, we should name the lake. We should name the lake. Uh, what's a good name for the lake? Let's see. So it's got this big drainage basin kind of, right? It's all the, it's all the surrounding countryside is going to be draining into that lake. So it can't really be named after any one of these three countries because they're all sharing parts of it. Easy way to name something is always, of course, just name it after something that it's nearby. Um, we're almost at the halfway point. So for anyone who's just joined the stream, this is an interactive podcast. I'm doing some map making, and I encourage people to make suggestions or ask questions. Because, um, uh, yeah, it's if it's just me talking, it gets, I don't know. I, I, want to, I want to make this a discussion and kind of come up with stuff. So chat. Figure out what you're going to name this lake, or I'm going to pick a random lake's name off of Wikipedia. So, lake something. Figure it out. I'll move on to some, drawing some other details in. Like the fact that maybe this mountain range starts to curve inward a bit more. I encourage you to have terrain features that do not make geological sense. A wizard did it. Your setting has probably has wizards. Good enough. And I think we'll put a town inside that, at the foot of that mountain. Um. So maybe this will be a bit of a desert. Uh, how I normally do deserts is light squiggly lines as opposed to C. I'll show you how I draw C's too. Um, for ocean what I usually do is heavy straight lines radiating away from the coast like this. Your players probably won't recognize the shorthand at first but uh, yeah it's kind of just like that and then like you get into the idea is the lines cover the area that's the continental shelf. So you start outlining, you start drawing an imaginary line that exists, you know, however far that is off of the coastline. Uh, but you don't actually have the lines touch the coast. It's kind of like that. Let me extend that one a bit further. And ideally they should be straighter than this, but eh. So you can kind of see the region starting to take shape, right? Just by adding these little bits of detail, um, it starts becoming less lines on a page and more a world that breathes, you know. Uh, we still have a need a name for this world too. Start shading in some of this a bit. Again, just a few example hills here. I think shading is probably the, one of the most tedious parts. One thing you can do is like give little cuts to help add further uh, impressions of like that there's other edges going on here. Like maybe there's a bit of darkness there. Uh, let's do this guy. This guy's got another hill back here, kind of maybe. I don't know. I feel like Bob Ross. We're drawing some happy little mountains. Happy little mountains. If it's snow covered, maybe you don't shade it all the way to the top. I don't know. Um, good idea. All right, let's finish drawing this desert.
So it's kind of like a sand dunes desert type deal. Because uh, again, it's because again, we decided that the prevailing wind is coming from the west, uh, so um, the rain shadow is going to be on this side. Uh, maybe we put some foot, some hills here too. Got some nice low hills. And I guess some put some hills kind of maybe here. Doesn't have to make geographic sense. We're just adding detail right now. Just adding stuff to make it interesting. Uh, we got this port here. We got the capital here. Maybe somewhere kind of right in the middle of all these plains. We've got a big market town. You know, so it's at the crossroads kind of between stuff coming from the capital going kind of towards the northwest versus stuff coming from this port city here and going in or getting distributed around kind of this huge grassland area. Um, so we can do that. Uh, let's draw the river in too. Draw it a bit more gently than uh, I did before. Oop, what the hell just happened? I don't know. I'm still not used to kind of actually freehand drawing with this stuff, but. All right. So I do like the I do like a, like a really meandering river. You notice I draw all the details just in black because, like I said, I'm used to just drawing in in plain black pen. That's how I normally draw my maps, um, at least to start with. The blue and red are just for my notes. Um, should probably put a delta in here. So how you do a delta is usually kind of. Take this and kind of just draw some extra crap around it. So that's like a marsh or a river delta. A bit over here too. Um, again, adding some detail. Like we know that over here, this is part of the mountains of metal. Maybe we've got some foothills too. Kind of fill in this edge here a bit. Um, this river is going to be a lifeblood. I want to put some towns, like I'm going to put a town right near the coast. Uh, again, coastal villages, you know, towns, fishing villages. Maybe there's a larger port here that serves Copperholm. Put a port town there. And then along the river, we'll have more villages, more city-states, um, since this is the Dagger Shore Vale and city states are its main kind of population centers. I feel like most of it's going to be this kind of wild jungle type area all the way up through the Vale, and it's just along this river is just where there's actually going to be main civilization. Um, I believe this is where we had the uh, railroad going to. Yeah, we did. We had this railroad that goes down one edge of the Vale and then winds across to Copperholm. I guess I'll put a town on where that railroad's going to go to. Uh, for future reference, boop, right there, right in the middle of that desert, R desert, right in the middle of that space. Let's go back to the uh, notes layer for a second here. I grab a, I guess gold is fine. We know that the railroad's coming. No, that doesn't show up at all. Why'd I do that? Silly me. Uh, purple. Let's do purple. You know that the railroad kind of comes along this way. Yes, my tablet did just, well, the program did just jump. I know, it's annoying. And I think it's going to go kind of along here and then cross the mountains. Uh, and go up into Tink, through Tincliffe, because this is the part that's absolutely part of the story. It's canon. The railroad goes to Tincliffe and then to Vrasta and then over into Kazal. That's what it does. Um, so, like I said, we got desert, desert, desert. My computer lags pretty hard when uh, I'm streaming, unfortunately, so, or at least, well, a lot of these programs are memory hogs uh, is part of the problem, I think. All right, um, 
And all the same, we've got Nassar over here, and we got to make notes that this is, you know, Fire of the Mountains also. Wow, I really changed the scale of what I was drawing these mountains at, didn't I? There we go. That's better. Feel free to, like, vary. When you're drawing mountains, it's good to have lots of different sizes, because, I mean, the peaks, right, you're not... You know, peaks will have different amounts of erosion and just they'll be older and, the, you know, whatever force produced them. Uh, mountains aren't all uniform size points, right? Maybe Nassar is at the, this is, maybe like this is a valley of smaller points and Nassar is at the foot of it. I like that idea. Um, so I'm just going to note in here that this is sh medium to shallow water. Like a true fjord, it gets deep, which I think is cool. Uh, what else can we do to add detail? Still need a name for that lake, chat, if anyone wants to suggest anything. Oh, all right. Let's, uh, let's put my tablet to the side for a second. I'll show you how to cheat at naming things. Every DM needs to know how to cheat at stuff. Uh, So here's how we cheat at um, here's how to cheat at naming things. Uh, pick up, go on Wikipedia. Wikipedia has lists of basically everything. So what you can do is you can just I want to name a lake. So and I can't think of a name on my own, or I don't know what language they're going to be speaking there. So maybe I don't know about that. Um, so pick a lake. In this case, I'm going to go lakes by depth, I think. Pick a list of lakes in this case. We want to pick a lake that is not famous, so that the name at least doesn't immediately tell you where it's going to be. Uh, probably, let's see here, lists ranked by mean depth. That might do. Do, 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 do. Lake Azure. From BC, cool. Um, I like that. Look, I like that. Lake Azure um, fits. I think if it's in BC, it's probably a mountain lake, which is what this is. It's a very large mountain lake, but it's still a mountain lake. So let's do that. Here we are. Lake Azure. Uh, and I will also add my shading to that. Really, it's a lake, it's shallow water, so it should be shaded more across like this. But it looks kind of ugly, so we're not going to do that. I'm just going to shade the edges like I normally do. So, like that kind of thing. Detail the lake. Um, detailing hills, you do. I usually do the same thing. Only I kind of tend to go down and to the side rather than. So I'm doing mountains like stroke like this, like sideways as I away from the edge as I fill in. Uh, for doing hills, I do like. Gimp, catch up with me, please. Thank you. More like that kind of shape strokes. It makes the shading come out slightly differently, uh, slightly to kind of help give the different character of the hills. Um, yeah. Let's go over to Castle. We haven't added much detail to Castle yet. Um, I want to say that maybe more of Castle's desert. I don't know. Or we should. We it's got this huge open space. We need to break this up some more. 
uh, we decided th that that mountain range stretches out that way. Uh, I don't know how mountainous really want this location of you. Maybe we can put a couple of large lakes or something in here. Uh, let's do that. Let's do like here, I guess. Give kind of just an odd blobula shape. Uh, well, let's do it with detail. That's not what I wanted. Okay, there we go. Um, come on, there we go. GIMP is pretty bad at getting the actual ink flowing. I might look into doing a setup where I can actually draw these maps uh, freehand with pen and paper, and then I can just scan what's produced afterwards, because I can do it way faster. I don't have to fight with this stupid drawing program. Um, I know that's not very detailed, but I'm kind of rushing now, I guess. Um, and we'll put some hills in here to kind of explain why these lakes are the way they are. All right, cool. And maybe we'll have a big river coming from somewhere off screen. So the source of that river will be some mountain somewhere probably. And this can flow like that. And then maybe the lake drains like out this way. Sure. So it's a lake, let's draw it in. Like I said, we don't need to name everything right at the when it's created. Letting stuff sit is fine. Also, you notice I don't really care about scale. Um, players move at the speed of plot. I don't do the whole, you spend this many days trekking through the wilderness generally. Um, so it's really just, where is this place relative to this place? You know, is it feasible to get there before bad stuff? The answer is probably yes. Where is Kazal's capital? I want to put Kazal's capital down in this kind of populous area, but maybe on the other side of the river. So Kazal's capital is going to be an enormous metropolitan port city. Shade that guy in, which will be named. Oh, let's see. Did we name it already? Um, Kazal. I don't see any note about its name, so... Yeah, no, I guess we didn't name Kazal yet. We didn't name Kazal's capital yet, so that's okay. Just know that it's here. We have this nice capital city right here. This huge, enormous port capital city on this river, which we'll name later. Um, where's the railroad going? Railroad's going to have to go to the capital. Uh, at some point. Let's have it take a road that takes it like this way, maybe. It's going to have to cross the river further from the coast, we'll say. So across the river there, and then goes through the capital, and then maybe takes off up that way. And maybe the capital's got a train station, and it branches off. And there's another railroad that goes that way. Uh, and maybe this is all desert or sparsely inhabited, or maybe it's just massive plains. Maybe it's, you know, like central U.S. or something like that. I, I got nothing. But uh, we'll figure it out as the plot demands. Um, we can add some towns along this railroad, though. Maybe there's another lake kind of over here, which is why they're, the railway goes that way. It's just a smaller lake. Uh, that goes like that, maybe. Maybe this is like just a really thick river, I don't know. Add some more hills. Uh, I want to stick a, mount, stick a mountain or two right here, I think. Just a couple short mountains. Just like that. Short old mountains on this little spit of a kind of peninsula. Add some shading to it. Yeah, that looks good. Happy little mountains. Um, 
we can start painting this a little bit in some kind of broad strokes if we want. Yeah, why not? We've got like 10 or so minutes left in tonight's show. Let's, uh, let's cut a new layer and start doing some quick painting. Very quick. Uh, because why not? Turn off the notes layer. Obviously, uh, a lot of this still has to be drawn. But uh, we can see we're starting to shape up here, this area along this coast. This coast is going to need a name at some point. Um, can't really do something too evocative like the Sword Coast or whatever, um, because Wizard owns that. Uh, but something, I don't know. Let me just uh, close up the outline on a couple of these edges here. All right. So now, if I go. Oh, hold on. Sample merged. No, is that still not working? Uh... No, we still have gaps somewhere. All right, well, maybe I'm not going to do this right now because I have to close this up. Oh, there's the gap. Hey. Um, do to do. That line, pen tool. Gonna close this in real dirty like. Uh, now are we good enough? Nope. Where is my gap? Okay, maybe we're not going to take time to color this all. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to just select the C so I can quickly uh, mask that out. But um, if it's not cooperating, then we'll just do it later. Quick, do it later. But uh, never mind. Okay. Um, turn notes back on. And uh, just kind of keep drawing, I guess. Mm -hmm. I know normally I do these shows for an hour, but I think I'm going to stop it here. I think I've shown off roughly what my drawing technique looks like for um, playing this out. Uh, obviously, we have to figure out where this railroad's going to go. We have to figure out what the transportation means are in Alvilda. Um, but I think this is a good ev evolution, right? We started with, you know, this. We started with this, right? And now we're already starting to look more like, uh, already starting to look more like a fantasy map than we were before. So you take this and you just kind of keep adding detail, adding detail, adding detail more and more, and then you wind up with something that looks like, let me show, let me pull it up a finished one, um, just a second. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, what am I looking for? Not that, that. So, when you're done, this is a pe this is a pen drawn one that I drew over the course of several months. Um, you can actually find the PDF of this on my blog, link below the video. Um, but this is the this is the style of map that we're ultimately working on. Um, and it starts out with just pick one small corner start drawing coasts, draw mountains, start adding detail, and just build it up and up and up. And this is kind of what the finished product will be like. Um, probably better edited together than I did it, but whatever. Um, you can kind of see. This is what our vision is like. So I think that's it for tonight's show. Uh, I get, oh, wow, my titles are missing. OK, I have to fix that. Um, yeah, uh, all this is Creative Commons 3.0 attribution. You can use it 
Uh, as long as you give me credit, uh, simply putting at too many knives or Twitch TV slash too many knives will do. Uh, thank you all for watching. This, if you missed the first half, this will go up on YouTube um, later tonight, probably. Other than that, I will see you next week. I think for next week's video, we'll do uh, that encounter design maybe for the high-level monster. I think that'll be an interesting video. Um, so tune in next week. In the meantime, see you guys later. Bye.